So now we are doing lesson 3.1, quadratic equation and inequalities. First, when I say quadratic, it means it's the form of ax squared plus bx plus. What does it mean I want to solve a quadratic equation equal to 0? It means I need to find the value of x that makes this equation equal to 0. And what does it mean geometrically or graphically how to solve x squared plus bx uh, plus equal to 0? It means I need to find... The intersection with x prime x. So if I graph it, how what are the intersection points? So algebraically, I need to find the values of x, and I can see it graphically by finding the intersection with x prime or x. Now let's solve by factoring using S and P for the quadratic equation. So if I have, for example, x squared plus 3x minus 40. All the time, P is A times C and S is B. P here is uh, 1 times minus 4, so it's minus 40 and S is 3. I need to find two numbers that if I multiply, gives me minus 40 and if I add, gives me 3. The two numbers are minus 5 and 8. Minus 5 times that gives me minus 40 and minus 5 plus that gives me 3. And then I you decompose, you split 3x as minus 5x plus 8x and then you factorize by grouping. Then I take here, I have a visible factor between x squared minus 5x, x is a factor, visible factor, and x factor of x minus 5, plus here I have 8, factor of x minus 5, and now I can see that I have a visible factor between those two uh, terms here, x minus 5, x minus 5, factor of x plus 8, and now if I want to solve it equal to 0, a product is 0, now I factorize it, so a product is 0, and one of the factor is 0, so it gives me x is 5 and x is minus 8. What does it mean? It means if you replace x by 5 here, the answer will be 0. If you replace x by minus 8, the answer is, uh, answer is 0. And if you graph this function, it will cut x prime or x for x at x equal 5 and x equal minus 8. Let's do another example. So here p is 2 times minus 4, it's minus 8, and s is minus 7. Which two number when I multiply gives me minus 8 and when I add gives me minus 7, it's minus 8 and 1. So I will split minus 7x as minus 8x plus x. Those two here, the common factor is 2x, factor of x minus 4. Here I have plus 1, factor of x minus 4. My visible factor is x minus 4, and what I still have to x plus 1. When I want to solve it equal to 0, this one gives me 4, and this one gives me minus half. Sure, you're going to ask me, miss, can I take 2x squared and x and minus x and minus 4 together by grouping? Yes. If you take 2x squared plus x, together and minus 8x minus 4 and you factorize by grouping here the visible factor is x I still have to x plus 1 here the visible factor is minus 4 I still have to x plus 1 I'm sorry for the handwriting the visible factor is 2x plus 1 so it will be 2x plus 1 factor of x minus 4 and you will get exactly the same answer now how do we solve by completing the square. So we did how do we solve using S and P. Solve by completing the square, it means I need to have it as an identity. It is the beginning of an identity, but there is something missing. So I need all the time to think about if I am completing the square to have it A plus B squared or A minus B squared. So if I look at this expression here, X squared plus 5X, this is the beginning of the perfect square. Minus 24, it's not there. Now it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a balance here. It's balanced the equation. I have two parts here. So this, if this is a squared and 2ab. What's still missing? b squared. So what you take here, you take 5 over 2 squared. So I need to add it on both sides. I add 5 over 2 squared on both sides of the equation. And in this case, I'm not changing anything in the equation. All what I'm doing is I'm trying to see here a perfect, uh, an identity. So this is on a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And this one gives me a plus b squared. I will take minus 24 to the other side and I will add it to 25 over 4. And now I have it's x plus 5 over 2 squared minus 121 over 4. And now how can I solve it? It's a square root positive or negative. So x plus 5 over 2 is equal to square root of 121 over 4 or minus. And then I continue solving. I will have 11 over 2 minus 11 over 2. I take 5 over 2 to the other side and I will get the roots of this equation so here i got i, I solved 
this equation by completing this way. If I didn't precise, I just said solve, you can solve any way you want. But when I precise by completing the square, so I need to add the perfect square or b squared to complete the equation to have an identity, or I can solve it by SNP if I mentioned SNP. Also, I can solve by quadratic formula. So the first method to solve an equation is using factorizing using SNP. The second one is by completing the square. And the last one now, it's the quadratic formula. And sure, also you can check your work on the calculator. If I have AX squared plus BX plus C, to find the intersection with X prime or X, I need to use the quadratic formula delta. It's B squared minus 4AC. Now, when delta is positive, it means I have to reroute. It means when delta is positive, the parabola cuts x prime x and two points. What are those two points? Minus b minus radical delta over 2a and minus b plus radical delta over 2 When delta is negative, there is no reroute, but you have a root in c, and we will see what does it mean c in the next lesson. And when delta is zero double root, it means the, I have one intersection, x1 equal x2, x minus b over 2. If I want to see it on the graph, guys, like look at it. In this graph, the function cuts x prime x in one point. So this is the double root. So this is the case where delta is zero. This figure here, there is no intersection. There is no roots. There is no solution for the equation. It means there is no intersection. So this is delta negative. And in this figure here, I can see the, the, the two roots. So delta is positive. I have two roots. So this is a graph of delta positive, uh, sorry, negative. Delta, uh, delta equal to zero, sorry, delta negative and delta positive. Let's move on. Now, how do we solve a quadratic inequality? Solve a quadratic inequality, it means I want to see where this, this equation gives me a negative or a positive answer. So step one, I need to study. It means I need to study its sign. So step one, I need to uh, solve it equal to zero to find the root and then to do the table of sign. How are we going to do that? Before I start, guys, I want to show you something. If you if you see those two graphs here, for when delta is positive, when delta is equal to zero, this one represents delta equal to zero, and this one represents delta is equal to zero. And this one is x squared, and this one is minus x squared plus 8x minus 16. When I say the sign of the quadratic, or what's the... Oh, inequality, it means I want to see the sign of y, okay, for a given value of x. If you look at this graph here, we can see that all the values of y are positive. And if I want to relate it to a here, a is positive, y is positive. If I look at this one, all the values of y is negative. And if I want to relate it to the equation, a is negative and y is negative. It means, guys, I can deduce that every time delta is equal to zero. Okay, I have a double root, but all the time the sign of the quadratic equation is same sign as a. So when a is positive, y is all the time positive. When a is negative, y is negative. So delta zero, double root, same sign of the sign of y is the same as a. So when I do the table, I have the double root here that gives me zero. But I have same sign as A, same sign as A. Now let's see when delta is negative. When delta is negative, if you look, this is the equation of this one. Here A is positive, Y is positive. Delta negative, Y is positive, same as A. Delta negative, here Y is negative. This one is this one, same as A. So exactly the same like the double root, but here there is no root. So the table doesn't, I cannot see here a zero. So when delta is negative, all the time I have the same sign as A. So either it's all the time negative, either it's all the time positive. And also here in delta equal to zero. Either it's all the time negative or it's all the time positive. But what's about when the case when I have a double root, when I have two roots? If you look at this graph here, this one I have delta positive, I have two roots. If you put, if this is the first root x1 and this is the first root x2, let's say. Here y is positive, then y is negative, then y is positive. If I compare it with a here, it's same as a. So it's same as a, opposite as a, same as a. If you look when the parabola is downward, when a is negative here, well, this is, it's minus x squared, this function, plus something. I don't care about it. If I look here, y is negative, then y is positive, then y is negative. So also I have same as a, opposite as a, same as a. 
So what can I deduce? Every time delta is positive, I have to reroute. Those are the zero. We say S or S. It means same. This is O. Same as A. Opposite as A. Same as A. So what can I deduce now? If I want to summarize, as when delta is positive, same, opposite, same. When delta is negative and delta is equal to zero, I have all the time same as A. Let's do an example. If I want to solve this inequality, I need first to take all to one part. So I will have, if I did from the side, I have 5x squared minus 6x minus 8 bigger than 0. So I want to see for which value of x the answer is all the time positive. It means I want to do the table of sine. To be able to do the table of sine, I need to find the roots first. So you need to solve it equal to 0. If I don't mention the method, you can do it by delta. I got delta positive, so I have two real roots. Minus b minus radical delta over to a minus b plus radical delta over to a. And what is the rule? Same as a, opposite same. a is 5 positive, plus, minus, plus. Which part do we need? The positive part. It means and not equal to 0. It means I will take minus infinity minus 4 over 5 union 2 plus infinity. One more example. So here I have... 12x minus 4 bigger equal than 9x squared. Also, I took this to this part, so I have minus 9x squared plus 12 minus 4 bigger or equal than 0. First step, I need to do delta. It gives me delta negative. What does it mean? Delta negative, it means I have the same sign as A. A is negative, so all the time this equation is negative, but they need it positive. What does it mean? So no solution. Impossible. This equation cannot it means, what does it mean? I cannot find the value of x. When I replace it here in this equation, it gives me a positive answer or equal to zero. All the time, it's going to give me a negative answer because when delta is negative, the function has the same sign as a. And this function is a negative. It means it's downward. Downward means it's somewhere here. So I cannot have a value of y that is positive. That's it. It's very easy. So if I can summarize all the time when delta is equal to zero, I have double roots and I can see on the table the double root here and I have same as A, same as A. When delta is negative, I have no real root and the table is all the time same as A, no zeros. And when delta is positive, I have two real roots. So I have the roots here, the zero, I have same, opposite, same. That's it for this lesson.